Hello and welcome to this edition of Standard Deviation, my column and video series. I'm TCA Sharad Raghavan, Deputy Editor at The Print, and today I'm going to be speaking to you about my latest column on how the impending elections are revealing exactly what the Modi government thinks about the economy, and it's not great news. Now, economic commentators, including people like me, are quite liberal with their analyses of the economy, taking to every medium possible to tell everybody what they think. Meanwhile, the Narendra Modi government is equally close-lipped, hardly ever releasing any meaningful analysis of its own. The government tries to create a fog of rosiness that everything is going well by highlighting only good news and confusing the gullible or the financially illiterate. But now, as the 2024 elections come nearer, the glare of these elections is burning away the haze that has been created around the economy and is laying bare what the government actually thinks. Now, at the outset, let me clarify that this is not about the PM's announcement that the free food program will be extended for five years which many have gleefully taken as an admission of the economy's weakness. I feel that the implications of the announcement have been overstated. It hasn't even received cabinet approval yet, although it probably will. This article and video instead has to do with several other decisions the government has actually implemented over the last few months. These decisions demonstrate the government's firm belief in the so-called K-shaped recovery, despite all of its talk about becoming the third largest economy and remaining the fastest growing one. These decisions thus highlight the difference between rhetoric and reality, revealed by the bright spotlight of the upcoming elections. But first, let's get the free food announcement out of the way because I know that a lot of people are using it to attack the government. Many commentators reacted to PM Modi's recent announcement that the free food scheme would continue for another five years by saying that this proved that the government thinks that 80 crore people can't survive without free food. First, the 80 crore number is a hangover from the last consumption survey that was done, which was for 2011-12. The current figure for the number of people who absolutely need free food is likely quite a bit lower. Second, these same commentators would have been up in arms if the government had either discontinued the free food program or had started charging for it again. Critics can't have it both ways. Last, this version of the free food plan kicked off on 1st January and the notification was only for 2023. Now, as the year comes to a close, it was expected that the government would extend the scheme. A five-year extension simplifies the process in one go instead of having to renew it every year. Now that said, what does show that the government is worried about the distress that people are feeling is its recent rollout of schemes like Bharat Dal and Bharat Atta. Under these brands, the government will sell highly subsidized pulses and flour to the public. For a government so vocal about its privatization plans and a prime minister who has repeatedly said that the government has no business to do business, entering the business of selling food items shows that there's quite a lot of alarm within the government, not only about the price of food, but also of the ability of the poor to afford it. The only difference now is that with elections nearing, the government has no choice but to take action. That's not all. The LPG subsidy has been hiked twice in just over a month. The first hike of rupees 200 per cylinder was troubling in itself since it was extended to all families and not just the poorer ones benefiting from the PM Ujwala Yojana. Then in October, the beneficiaries of the scheme were given an additional rupees 100 per cylinder subsidy. Earlier in May, the government also stated that its expenditure on fertilizer subsidies would overshoot the budgeted amount for 23-24 by more than 30%. Then there's the emergency allocation of rupees 10,000 crore for MG Narega due to a spurt in demand for work. A higher than budgeted demand for MG Narega work is a direct indication of the weakness in the rural economy. It's easy to dismiss most of these decisions as cynical election-related freebies, but the fact remains that they are needed. A rupees 200 per cylinder price reduction for the non-poor, as has been implemented, 
becomes attractive only if the incomes of the non-poor are not growing fast enough. It's also significant that with caste issues again at the fore, thanks to Bihar's recent caste census or survey exercise, PM Modi chose to instead recently say that the poor are the biggest caste in the country. This was of course primarily a political comment, but it was also an economic one. It meant concentrate on the poor. On the flip side, it's reasonably clear that the government believes that the top 1% of the population is doing just fine. Of course, it won't come out with election related schemes for the rich, but it is going out of its way to woo companies like Tesla and Lotus, which typically sell cars priced in the crores and also companies like Apple. These ultra premium companies are expected to not only invest, but also sell in India. And it's the top prong of this K that will be doing the buying. Now, not too long ago in May, Chief Economic Advisor V. Anant Nageshwaran had said that the economy was running on autopilot, which meant that the government saw no need to interfere. The only unexpected change since then has been the Israel-Hamas war, which so far has not hurt India economically in any significant way. This begs the question, has the economy deteriorated rapidly since May? Or was all that talk at the time just rhetoric? What's clear is that the impending Lok Sabha election is taking away the government's ability to confuse the issue. Pay keen attention. The next few months will tell you far more about what the government thinks than the last four years have. On that note, that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for watching.